All right, guys, and welcome back to Code with Josh. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the basics of functions in Python. This is kind of like a comprehensive beginner's guide, and I'm going to guide you guys through that process of creating functions in Python. Are you guys ready to code like a boss and unleash the real power of Python? Well, by doing so, we can create functions, and this is the ultimate way to reuse your code. I want you to think about functions kind of like an army of minions. They're loyal and they're there when you need them. Have you seen the Minions movie? <laughs> it's kind of like them, right? When you need them to help you, they're always there to help you. Well, functions are the same thing. And to create these awesome reusable functions, we are going to use a new Python keyword, DEF or DEF. Ta-da! <laughs> Let's jump in and I'm going to show you what I mean. All right, so what is a function? Well, I've said a function is a piece of reusable code with a unique name. I want you to think about print, int, input. Those are special Python functions. They have a unique name. Well, our functions have a unique name too. We can call them and use them in any part of the code we want to. I mentioned that keyword def. Def means to define. We are defining a new function. And here we can give it a name of anything we want to give it. Just like a variable though, it should be lowercase, no spacing. That's the name of our function. Any code inside our function is going to run when we call this function. Inside the parentheses, we could put any parameters. These parameters are kind of like a variable that we can use inside the function. On the outside, when we're ready to use it, we need to call our function. Right here you can see test function, I'm calling it, and I need to give it two arguments. Arguments is like the live information that's going to go to your function. If I have two parameters, I need to have my two arguments, long story short. Here you can see I have an example for you guys. I've prepared a function called person info. So I define this new function at the top of my code and I'm giving it three parameters, name, age, and nationality. I can use these parameters within my function as like a variable, right? So print welcome, this is a string, then my variable name. Now this code is not gonna run until, you guessed it, call your function. Outside of my function then, in my normal program, we have an input, so I'm collecting the amount, and then I'm gonna have a loop that's gonna run that number of times. If I say here in my input three, this loop is gonna run three times. Every single time it's asking me for a name, an age, and a nationality. These values are being passed as the arguments to my function. Let's take a look at an example. So there you go. In the input, if I said Josh, 25 American, these values are going up to my function and that's printing off, welcome Josh, you're 25, you are American. Those are our arguments, that live info being passed up and used within our function. We do not use the word def anywhere else except when we define the function. When I wanna call the function just like print or input, or range. I just say the name of the function with a set of parentheses. Inside, I need to give it arguments if my function requires. Cool. The takeaway from this is remember that a function is a reusable block of code. You, the programmer, define it one time using the keyword death. You program your function, and then anywhere else in your code, you can call that function when you need it. Pretty cool. Let's jump into VS Code, and I'm gonna show you guys a few basic examples. All right, 
let's kick things off here in VS Code with a very basic function. Let's say like greet. So I'm going to define a function called greet. And greet is going to take some name. Inside here, when I call the greet function, I want it to say, hello there, comma, and then I'm going to say name. That's my parameter. So on the outside here, when I call my function, I need to give it an argument. All right, if I say Josh, that's the argument that's being used in the function. Let's run our code. You can see, hello there, Josh. I'm running that. That's pretty cool. Okay, well, let's do another example. Let's say if we have like an add numbers function, and this could take two parameters, x and y. Now inside, I want to say like answer equals x plus y. And then I could print my answer. Now when I call upon this new function we made, I could say 5 and 10. 5 and 10 are the arguments that are going to be passed up and given to our function and then added together. Let me call it, and you can see right there, 15. That's my function. I programmed it one time. Now anywhere in my code I can use and call my function add numbers. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay. Now what if I want to get a number back? So what if I wanted to say like, okay, I want to get the value from add numbers and I want to say like new number. And new number is going to be like, I don't know, 50 plus whatever number this gives me back. So it's kind of like saying that, right? So ideally in this case, I want it to output 65. Well, I can't do that with print because print is nothing. Print is literally just for you. If you want to do something with the value that your function gives you back, we need to return a value. Let's take a look at what I mean. So here you can see in this new example, I have a function and this function is called good deal. It takes a parameter cost and then I can use that just like I normally would. So like, if the cost I give it is greater or equal to 50, and also that same cost is less than 150, this variable response is equal to, this is a good deal. Also, if that cost is greater than 150, this response variable is actually overpriced. When our function is done running, I can return my variable. I am giving back, I am returning this data that I want to be able to use on the outside of my function. Now over here on the outside of the function, I have a variable, res. In programming, res is really just short for result. That's what it means. So result res in this example is a variable that holds a value. Let's look at that value. That value is my function. But what is that value going to be? Well, the value is going to be whatever this returns. If I return overpriced, res equals overpriced. If response is equal to cheap by now and I return that response, res is equal to cheap by now. I can now use res in conditions. I could say if my response is equal to this, then I'm going to print off something additional. When you have something you want to return and give back to use, outside of your function, you need to use the return Python keyword. Don't use print. All right, let's jump into VS Code real quick and let's just code out this example. All right, so here we are in VS Code. Let me close this. 
Uh, let's just turn that off. That was like my example. So what if we define a new function and you call it like good deal? Inside here, you're going to give this function a number, a cost. And if this cost is, let's say, uh, less than or equal to 50, I'm gonna have this response. And I'm gonna say response is equal to a great deal. I'm just gonna say else, and I'm gonna say response is equal to overpriced. At the end of my function, I am going to return my response. There you have it. Now let's go outside the function, okay? And let's create a variable like uh, res. And the value of this variable is going to be whatever good deal returns. So I'm just gonna say good deal cost. Now I do need a cost. So before that, let's just say cost equals integer input. So I'm going to convert this input to an integer. And I can say enter a cost here. I have my response. And let's just say if the response I get from my function is equal to, uh, let's say, overpriced, then I want to print off something additional like save your money. Let's run the code and try it. You can see it's asking me for costs. Let's start with a cheaper number, so 25. Now, nothing is gonna happen, right? So you see the program automatically broke. It's not even printing this because return does not print anything. It returns a value that you can use again. If you don't use that value, you're not gonna see it. Let me run it one final time. This time I'm gonna enter 150, enter. Oh, okay, save your money. You can see that my response I got from my function was overpriced, printing save your money. Great, to wrap things up, long story short, functions are reusable blocks of code that you can define one time and call upon them anywhere else in your code. If you wanna use the value that your function returns, you need to use the keyword return. If you give your function parameters, remember to give it arguments. So functions are versatile, reusable, and even nestable. What is nestable? <laughs> Think of those little wooden Russian dolls that you can open, and every time you open, there's a doll inside. Well, nesting is the same thing. And this concept, if you're not familiar with it, don't worry, because that's why I'm here. I'm here to break down all that complex tech jargon and make it easy to understand for you. And we'll look at that in a future episode. Hey guys, if you're interested, the first link in the description is an absolutely free Python beginner's guide cheat sheet that I made for you. And this is the same cheat sheet that I give to all my students on the first day of class. And I'm giving it to you guys absolutely free. Just click the link in the description, use it, and use it through your programming journey. Well, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Code with Josh, and I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Until next time, I'll see you guys there.